my lovely, lovely imps. Today, I want to talk about loneliness and community in the LGBT world. It's a topic that has been on my mind a lot recently. And not just recently, but for a while, um, in various forms. But I've been thinking about it especially going into 2024 because I've been trying to think about, like, you know, where's my place in all this? Um, I am trans. Some of you know that. Some of you don't. But now you know. Now everybody knows. Pretty open about it. I talk about it fairly frequently. I'm also gay and poly. So I got a, I got a whole little rainbow collection of my own. These are all real daily parts of my daily life and experience. Every single day, my life is affected by those three parts of who I am. Um, I have been in the sort of process of transition for just about 13 years now. Uh, in somewhere around in the ballpark of 2010 was when I found the words to describe who and what I saw myself as. Um, that was when I learned what, what it meant to be trans, and I realized that it applied to me very strongly. Um, I have, of course, dealt with being trans my whole life, um, and the first sort of trans feelings I ever had, I was very young. I was like eight years old, the first time I ever realized what it, like, there, something distinct. And even younger than that, when I had my first sort of the first, I guess you could say the first signs of me being uh, gender uh, divergent, we'll call it, or whatever you want to use, whatever term you want to use. Um, so in 13 years of being plugged into the knowledge of what being trans is and trying to find and connect with other trans people to develop a vocabulary, develop you know, any sort of connection, people who are like me. I've been in a lot of different places and I've seen a lot of stuff. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts about it and hopefully hear some of yours as well because uh, it's a tough world out there. There is a lot of, especially right now, you know, right now it's 2024, the very beginning of 2024, and there has been a surge of specifically anti-trans laws here in the United States. I think there's been something like uh, somewhere over 100 have already been introduced in various states in just this year alone already. There is a massive movement uh, to make it harder to exist as a trans person safely and publicly, to restrict our health care, to stigmatize us, to basically put us in a second class where we have to be treated differently. Um, and that's very difficult to deal with. I mean, it's not new either. This, um, the intensity is certainly new. But hatred or distrust or attempts to marginalize have been around for a very long time. And that part is not new. There have been some victories and there have been some, you know, some social victories. Uh, for example, one such major social victory uh, was Obamacare it was very, very good for trans people. Obamacare made it illegal to discriminate against someone based on pre-existing conditions for insurance, which meant that uh, insurance companies could no longer deny you care just because you were trans, which they were able to do before. They were able to literally say, oh, sorry, you being trans, we found out you're trans, now you can't get health care. We're not going to cover that. Um, that was that was legal in the United States for a while, not anymore. But there, uh, but there have also been uh, some pretty major uh, attacks, successful attacks against the trans community. Uh, Donald Trump 
banned trans people from being active members of the military, which is a very obvious hateful thing to do, basically saying we don't think that you're fit to serve among uh, other Americans. It's pretty obvious uh, what kind of uh, statement is being said there. Now, obviously, thankfully, that's been undone, but it might be redone depending on who wins the presidency this year. Really hard to say. Um, 2024 has the dawn of this new year has had me thinking about community a lot. And it's had me thinking about my past, some of my experiences. And for a lot of my early transition, especially, I was very isolated from other trans people. Thankfully, I, I was lucky to have some really awesome friends. Uh, I, I, I don't even want to call them allies because they weren't allies. They were accomplices. They believed in me and stood by me. Um, most of them were not trans themselves. Most of them were cis people who loved me and who I loved. And I do still to this day. Many of them are still my friends. But for a lot of my transition, I, uh, I didn't know many trans people or the trans people that I knew. Uh, the few trans people that I did know were very far away. For most of my transition, the, the primary trans person that I knew lived far, far away from me. And even though we were close, we weren't, we weren't able to be physically present to help one another, to, to, to back one another up. And I went through a lot uh, in my early transition. It was very difficult. I've uh, been fairly open about this, but I'll talk about it here again. Some of you will have heard about this already. So I apologize if you've already heard me tell this story a hundred times. Um, my family, uh, a member of my family found out that I was trans and aggressively, uh, forcibly outed me to my entire family long before I was ready to come out to the rest of my family. I had told, uh, one or two family members that I was trans, that I was figuring that out. And one family member found out and ran with it and basically told everyone, um, and that was a very isolating experience, especially because it, of course, went from there and it progressed into a ongoing conflict that I had not asked for. Um, things, some very wild things happened in my early transition, including a uh, intervention style uh, event where a bunch of my super Christian family members uh, sort of tricked me to come over to a family outing. And then when I couldn't leave, and there was no way for me to leave, it was in the middle of nowhere at a relative's house, and they were my ride. They basically sat down and interrogated me about being trans and argued with me about whether or not I should be trans or not. Um, and then eventually, my uh, a big chunk of my family, including my uh, my dad, completely disowned me. And... Uh, I had multiple family members directly threaten violence towards me. Um, sometimes just completely out of a desire to try and control my behavior. As in, I wasn't even talking to them. I wasn't doing anything. But they felt that uh, they had the right to try to correct my course because of some moral um, claim or another. And all of these things were really hard to deal with, obviously. But they were even harder to deal with because through the vast majority of them, I had maybe one trans friend, another person who was dealing with the same struggles as me, the same process. And beyond that, I had 
the internet. A vague, loose collection of people posting things that could sometimes offer a word of support, but often only existed in that I could see that there were other people out there. One such example of this was Reddit and YouTube. Or I should say two such examples. I said one, but there's two examples. Reddit and YouTube. When Early on in my transition, I spent a lot of time on various transgender subreddits on Reddit. And then on YouTube, there was this... I don't want to call it a trend because it wasn't really a trend. It was like a, it was like a thing that people did at the time. They're not popular anymore, really. But they, there used to be this thing on, on YouTube uh, that the trans community, there was a lot of solidarity on the trans community uh, posting transition timelines on YouTube. For obvious reasons, people don't do that anymore. Uh, it, it leaves you very open to being targeted. Obviously, some people still post transition timelines, but... Seriously, at the time, that was a very popular thing among the trans community to do, would be you upload a video that has a bunch of photos of you from the beginning of your transition to the end of your transition. It would basically be a slideshow. People would sometimes put music in there. Sometimes they would talk during it or whatever. Um, but uh, those are not very popular on YouTube anymore. They still exist. Some people still do them, but a lot of people don't. Um... And then, of course, like I said, Reddit, where there were a lot of communities where people would discuss things. And uh, they would talk about, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? What does anybody have any advice for this? And whatever. Those were lifelines for me in that period of time. They made me feel like I wasn't as alone as I was. But in truth, in a lot of ways, I still was very alone. Um... There were so many things at that point in my life that I just had no one else really to talk to. Or I might have had one person you know, who I was close with to talk to about this sort of thing. Um, and there are some huge things I dealt with. I dealt with the whole family thing. I dealt with being with a partner who was with me before transition and decided to stay with me while I transitioned and then had complicated feelings about staying with me while I transitioned, which is understandable to a degree. Well, very understandable, but there were complications obviously from that. And I, there was not a whole lot of opportunity for me to talk to other people. About. Like I said, I had one friend at that time really who I could talk to and be, and, and their life was very different than mine. They lived a very different life. Some of their struggles were not the same as mine. But there were other trans people who were obviously dealing with those things. and But I wasn't able to connect with them one way or another. So there were a lot of things on which I just felt very alone. And during that period of time, this is my retrospect now. You know, me looking back on it, I realize how vulnerable I was as a result of that. That... Uh, even though there were some connections. You know, I could go on Reddit and I could see that there were other trans people out in the world, that there were trans people celebrating one another, that there were trans people, like, you know, offering some form of solidarity, that it was very disparate, even at the best of times. Um, and that it was risky. That it was that all of those people, many of those people were in equally vulnerable positions. They were from different parts of the world. They didn't have strong interpersonal connections with one another. They knew each other through the internet. And some of them perhaps once in a while would make connections. Um, but a lot of the times they just knew each other as presences on the internet, as a cluster of people spread across, a diaspora spread across the globe. Uh, and they were all in similarly vulnerable positions. And uh, all of this sounds very sad. And it is. There's a lot, there was a lot of sadness involved in that experience, no doubt. But there was also, I want to say that like there was 
an incredible amount of beauty in the connections that did exist. There was shared excitement. There was shared celebration. There was uh, uh, a, a exchange of vocabulary that was empowering. There was a exchange of uh, knowledge that was empowering. The fact that you could figure out what HRT doses were safe because people could go on Reddit and they could post a link to a medical document, a verifiable medical document that safely tells you what dosages are good for certain types of uh, of hormones within you know you know within reasonable safety. Um, that was incredible and literally life saving. Not even joking. Um, the fact that there were people out there sharing tips on how to uh, uh, use makeup, on how to find resources. That was a start. It was a beginning and it was there was so much beauty there. Um, there were trans people, you know, starting, I mean, in so many ways, it, it, showing each other that they were out there making things, that they were saying, hey, look, I'm doing this thing and I'm trans. I was beautiful and amazing. Um, these are all things that were incredible and, and wonderful at the time, but it was limited. And I wanted to make sure that I, I talked about the beautiful parts as well as the reality of my situation, that at the end of the day, I know that not, it wasn't just me, it was me and many other people were basically in our isolated world on a computer, connected, but disparate. Now I'm, now I'm starting to think, oh, wow, got some Death Stranding overlaps going on here. And I didn't even think about that before I did this uh, segment. Um, kind of wild, right? Um, I've been thinking about a lot of that. And I've been thinking about how much danger I was in at various points because of that isolation that my family was able to hurt me more and was able to uh was able to threaten me more because i had no other way like not even not even in ways that were like like they were able to tell me to do this or not because i got kicked out when i when, when there was this whole situation where i was forced back home i had no financial stability because I had made certain decisions based on what my family wanted me to do. You know, my family was very, very stringent about you are going to go to college. So I made the choice to go to college, which put me in debt, which put me in a position where I relied on, on certain aspects of my family to continue doing what I wanted to do. I still worked. I like, I worked all the time. I was able to find a way to like sustain myself, but then I was forced back home and that, that, meant I had no money. I was broke and I didn't have a job because I had left where I was in college, which is far away. And and they had me in a, mo in a, in a position and they used that position to kick me out at one point. That, not just stuff like that, but beyond. That like the fact that they knew where I was at all times. They could know that because I didn't have the resources or the ability or the connections to get out of where I lived. That meant that they could do things to me. That meant that they could threaten me with things. They could control me. They did. And I realize how much of that, how much of the damage they were able to do was the product of isolation, was the product of having no other human connections to other people in a similar situation that you share uh, a bond with. The, the social connections I did have saved my life. They did. Absolutely. Like, if it wasn't for my friend Retcon, who sometimes shows up in chat, if it wasn't for my friend Retcon, I would have been done for. Okay, I would have been in a really, really, really bad spot. When I got kicked out, Retcon offered me a room. A spare room that I could collapse in. And that changed my life. But there were other things that retcon couldn't 
and it wouldn't have been fair to ask of retcon. You know? Um... And that just, you know, that would, that could have been things that, that I could have been, if, if the world was a different story, if things had been different, and if I had different connections at that time, there were ways I could have saved myself harm that only inter-trans connection can help with. Things like HRT, things like, um, no, like other people, like, sitting there and going, I have been through this this type of discrimination. Here's how you can deal with this type of thing. These experiences shape you. Yes, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that I have like regrets. I am analyzing what happened and where there were vulnerabilities that existed in my past life as a result of being disconnected. Time moves on, okay? And in my life, once I dealt with the brunt of the, the, the family bullshit, once I was like, ate that, you know, once I dealt with the getting kicked out, once I dealt with the disownment, once I dealt with the ridiculous, uh, and I was able to distance myself and find a way to stand on my own, you know, I had work, I figured out how to do it. Once that happened, um, I, oh, I, I shouldn't skip. I should, I should, I, I, I skipped forward. As a result of, of all of the pain that I was going through, at one point I detransitioned. I've talked about this in my detransition video, which you should go watch if you haven't seen it. It's on my channel. Just look on my channel. Look up my, my conversation about detransition. Um, I got to a point where I was suffering so much and I was so isolated from basically the entire, you know, my siblings and everybody that I grew up with um, that I sort of came to the conclusion that there was no way, no viable way for me to go forward with transition and that it was foolish of me to do so. And obviously that was incorrect. And I made myself more miserable by detransitioning. But I did. I stopped, threw my hormones away in a very, very, very mentally unwell spot. I threw them all away and uh, that hurt so bad. It was like, it hurt so fucking bad. I can't even, I can't even express to you how bad to do, to be in that position. It was miserable. And uh, when I decided, you know, a year to a year and a half later to, to transition, that I was, I was like, that was a mistake. Obviously, it was a mistake. The idea that I thought that all of my trans feelings that I'd had my entire life were just going to go away if I just powered my, if I just beat myself up enough. Like, the idea that I could repress that. Once I realized, like, I can't do that anymore, I, the reason that I was able to work myself back into a position of being like, wait a second, like, I need to be brave enough to do this because I'm going to suffer forever was because I had finally connected with a bunch of other trans people. And for the first time in my life, I found myself with a friend group of trans people. Uh, I had a little group chat of trans women. We chatted about stuff. We talked shit. We talked about whatever. We went back and forth on various discussions. And that was so empowering. In fact, I hadn't even, I wasn't even in the group when I decided to retransition. I was just aware of it. And, uh, and I had seen these trans people, these trans women supporting one another. And I was like, wait a second. Like, this is never, I know this is never going to go away. It hasn't gone away. It hasn't gone away in the year that I wasn't on hormones. Um, I, I, my dysphoria hasn't gone away. I have to just own this fact, regardless of what anyone else says. And, and then eventually I found myself, you know, in real social connections with them. It was unbelievably empowering. Now, some of those people uh, I still know. Some of them we've gone very different ways. Some of them <laughs> things didn't go well with. Uh, but 
there was a and some of them some of them might actually be in this chat or were in this chat i met grime dango at that time at that particular time this was years and years ago it was when i met grime dango for the first time and me and grime dango are besties we still hang out all the time So that was a pretty important thing, being able to connect and talk with other trans people was, was unbelievably important. Now, I mentioned that some of the trans people in that group, I am not friends with anymore. In fact, one of the trans people that was a part of that friend group was one of the most toxic people I've ever met in my entire life and an, an actual dangerous person complicated but uh and that can happen too but the fact of the matter was that i went from having one single trans connection in the entire world to having five six then seven then ten and it was incredibly important unbelievably important And around this time was when I had started connecting with people on Twitter. And let me tell you something, okay? Twitter, at that point in time, this would have been around like 2014, 2015, okay? So pre-Trump, 2014, 2015, Twitter was like, it was insane, but also there were so many trans people on Twitter. Oh my God. And they were connecting. And that was something that was magical about that time. And I think that is something that has been lost, which is that the Twitter era, because of the way Twitter operates, it encouraged people to connect elsewhere. And so they didn't just connect on, they didn't just connect on Twitter and stay on Twitter. Sometimes they did. But a lot of times they would take it to, chat apps they would begin voice chatting with each other they would become friends they would get to know each other to a real degree and oh my god um was that was that a, a game changer during this era i met one of my current partners on uh, on twitter and we connected off twitter and became actual friends we went from just knowing who one another as people on the internet to being fr to being friends, actual friends. And we're still together now. And that's pretty goddamn amazing and incredible, you know? Um But as time went on, things changed on the internet. And this kind of brings us to the, where we are now. You know, I don't want to fast forward too quickly, but a lot of stuff has changed online since 2014, 2015 era, okay? A lot has changed. And one of the things that has changed a lot is that every social media is a one-stop shop now. Instagram wants to be the place that you post the place that you watch videos, the place that you listen to music. YouTube, well, YouTube hasn't, po hasn't figured out posting yet, but Twitter wants to be the place that you post videos, the place that you watch videos, the place that you listen to stuff, and the place that you post. Facebook, same thing. TikTok, same thing. And they want you to spend all your time on the app. And you will get to know, you will find people, and you will become familiar with people as posters, as entities, as uh, uh, as a as basically micro brands. Everybody's their own little micro brand. This effect has ratcheted up so massively. I've watched it happen in real time. I've watched the social media turn from uh, a tool that people go on to to connect with other people to like find stuff 
you go on there to find something interesting to these things being a being a social sphere in and of themselves and it is the worst okay it is sickening okay like genuinely oh my dear god it is so bad and i think and of course a lot of this also has coincided or i shouldn't say coincided the pandemic happened a remarkably isolating event, a quite literally physically isolating event where people had no choice but to either get sick and potentially die or isolate or both. You Sometimes you isolate and you still get sick. Sometimes you isolate and you still die. It's been a horrible time. And I will be honest, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the nitty gritty of the pandemic but the pandemic has been a, nobody is being honest about how insane the pandemic has really been. Not one person, not even the most dramatic person you can imagine. None of us have been able to fully grasp, our brains are not capable of grasping the scale of, of mass suffering, death, and isolation that has been the fallout of the pandemic. And all of this happened right after a major change in social media where social media has changed from being a place that you go to see specific bespoke things and and connect with other people to being a place that you go to basically live you go to maintain an identity as opposed to it being like you know like think about the way that you use text messaging okay text messaging connects people and when you use text messaging, you're using as a, as, as a tool to connect with somebody, you know? And sometimes you might text somebody that you don't know that well yet. Like you might meet somebody on an app and you might start texting them, but you're using texting as a tool. People don't use Twitter, TikTok, Facebook as a tool. It's a place that they put a version of themselves and then that version of themselves is engaging with other versions of other people's selves. And then there's all this drama that builds up, and but it, nev it very, very rarely reaches out and beyond. Sometimes it does. But often it doesn't. And that's especially true since the pandemic, because people couldn't, or they felt like they couldn't, or they, you know, or they were highly discouraged from doing so. And I think that we are in a bit of a crisis at the moment, a crisis of LGBT loneliness. And I don't think that the loneliness itself is new, but I think that the conditions that magnify it have gotten significantly worse and that we have to grapple and respond to that. And it's really hard. It's been bothering me so much. I've been thinking back over all of this and thinking about all the junctures of my life where I had so few trans connections and, uh, and how I felt at those times, remembering the pain, the, the outright just ab abyssal loneliness, the sort of feeling that makes your chest drop where you're just like, what am I supposed to do? What the fuck am I supposed to do? I live in this rural area and maybe the one person that I can talk to doesn't share this struggle with me. There's another aspect to it too, which is that not all, you know, inter-trans and inter-gay and inter-queer connections are going to be healthy ones. I mentioned before that one of the people that was in the group that I belonged to in the past was an incredibly dangerous individual uh they were a harmful person oh my goodness you're amazing thank you so much <gasps> is this a oh my god incredible thank you Doe just brought me food beautiful wonderful um god that looks good i'm gonna have to hold off because i gotta finish the segment before i eat but oh no that was a uh, Mountain Dew, wasn't it? 
Maybe I'm remembering from this morning. I don't remember. I thought it was Mountain Dew. Okay, whatever. Never mind. I thought my Mountain Dew got mixed with Coke. Whatever, it'll still taste good. So. It's, it's just, not Mountain Dew. It's, it was Coke. I thought it was. I'm, I was. No, I have I'm barely. Not, I've I'm mostly been drinking my water, but. I had Mountain Dew this morning. You're probably you're probably right. It was Coke. You you filled it, so you probably know. Thank you. I love you. Look at this. Hold on a second. I'm gonna take just a pause, just so you guys can see. Got fucking street corn. We got fucking elote. Oh my god. Oh, I got butter on my fingers now. Oh god, it tastes so good. Thank oh, you. That be. Oh, I have some. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my god, it's so good. I gotta eat it. Okay, that means I gotta speed up my fucking. Ignore this. All of you who are watching in the future video, ignore this portion, okay? Just ignore that. Um. Uh, okay, hold on a second. So, let's get back to the mo- Look it. Okay? Actually, no. You know what? Don't look away. Don't ignore this part. The fact that I now live in my current moment of my life through, admittedly, a lot of effort. And it's a bit of a long story, but- I now live with multiple other trans people. Some of them are my partners, one of them is not, but I live with multiple trans people. And the fact that we live together and support each other and are together and present in one another's lives is fucking amazing. It has literally changed everything, okay? The loneliness that I'm talking about is stuff that I see online and that I encounter all the time, okay? Um, it does get better, it does, it does, and it can. But what I wanted to talk about was, um, I think right now, there is a severe lack of community in, I see a lot of trans spaces. That's what I see a lot of but in a lot of queer spaces generally. I think the community has been broken down and I genuinely believe it's time for us to tar start taking steps to build it back up because we are way, way more powerful when we are together. I mentioned right before the food came in that uh, uh, I mentioned that, that like, there was somebody who was harmful in, the, in our group of friends who did harm to other people and did harm to me. Um, but I was able to survive that person. I was able to resist that person and I was able to get distance from that person because I had other connections. Our ability to connect with one another, our ability to have multiplicative connections means that we don't grasp on like 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 a like a death rope to any one person that we're able to choose the people that we hold tightly to instead of being forced into it you know Yes, uh, Skylar Krause in YouTube chat says something to point out too is the pandemic also caused a lot of IRL LGBT spaces like gay clubs, etc. to be shut down. This has always been one severe limitation of things like clubs, you know, which are businesses so that they ultimately rely purely on money. And that's not to say they were bad. They served a great purpose and they were valuable, but they're like in some case we have to deal with the fact that they're gone. We have to rebuild. We need to rebuild and we need to build other structures as well. One thing that I've always wanted for my community is that I have always wanted my community to be a place where people can find each other and connect more deeply. I, you guys who've been listening to me for a long time have heard me say this over and over and over again and I will never stop saying it, that I always encourage you to not just pop into the Discord, not just pop a comment here and there. I mean, it, it's fine if you do. I'm not saying everybody's gotta be this. Some people got other sh shit going on. But I want this community to be a space where if people need it, they can come here, 
find other people like themselves and different from themselves and build real connections that expand beyond these platforms. Not just perpetually lost forever, screaming into the voids of YouTube comments, not just posting into the void on Twitter, but actually connecting with other people, building connective nets, threads that are tied together, strands, you might say, that can make us stronger, so much stronger. And I, I talked about something, you know, I talked about on my last stream, I talked about schisms in the trans community. And I talked about some of this. I touched on some of what I'm talking about now then. But this stream, I wanted to focus on the community aspect. I wanted to focus on a very real understanding of why that community is important. It's not just about not fighting on Twitter. It's not just about like, you know, social media feeling terrible to go on. It's about the fact that, that we become better when we can connect with one another. We become more powerful. We are, our lives change and we're less vulnerable to the things that we're, that, that can hurt us the most when we connect with one another. And that has downstream effects because it means that more people are spending more time doing generative, creative, wonderful things instead of suffering. It, it brings color and life and warmth into the world. And sometimes it doesn't start by just going to a random place and meeting a random person in the real world. Sometimes the internet is our feelers. The internet is where we can uh, connect the first time. But more and more these days, there are, there are so many structures that discourage us from doing that, that discourage us from connecting at all. They basically want us to connect only on the most surface level that we are supposed to uh, appear on a place, generate content via memes, posts, whatever, and then check the fuck out. But I think we need to push against that. I think we need to actively, all of us, all of you listening, myself included, obviously I'm already, I'm doing my part already. I have a whole community that I constantly encourage, but I want to encourage all of you out there to, to, to continue to take those steps, to use these platforms as tools to connect and to find one another and do like we did in the old days, okay? Not to be like a old day, oh, back in the day, but I mean, let's, let's wind things back a little bit to before all these platforms wanted to be walled gardens. Let's get back to that point where we were connecting with real people because I can tell you, really connecting with real people because I can tell you that it's fucking powerful. It is life changing, okay? And those connections break you out of a mindset. They break, they break us out of a mindset. People are way less likely to want to fucking Twitter cancel uh, somebody who they actually know, who they actually have connections to, who they actually care about, and they're less likely to want to do that at all if they don't have their entire identity staked on their presence on a website, which is a problem, and it's a sympathetic problem. I'm not just calling people terminally online, although that absolutely exists. There are a lot of people who are basically... Their only presence in the world is online, and they guard that with understandable fervor. But you can change, we can change that by actually connecting with each other, by building relationships between humans. And I want to see more of it, because I've seen what an internet, like what a, a trans like what the internet can power the trans community to do. I've seen it. I've seen it appear and I've seen it get driven out. And I know that we can see it again. And let me tell you, okay, there is some fucking beauty right now. All right. I have been making a concerted effort over a long period of time to try 
and connect with more people online, more trans people online. And I can tell you, there are a bunch of disparate groups of people who are all doing some banger cool shit, who are some fucking sick ass people. And if they start connecting with each other, the power will be unimaginable. But we can't do that for as long as we are trapped in vicious cycles for as long as we're letting these fucking platforms play us. And the only way we stop that is by changing our actions. That's the only way we can do it. We have to, ch we have to sit down, knuckle down, and say, all right, how do we engage with things differently? How do we change our approach to this stuff? And I, and I, and I, and I think that's part of what we're talking about now. Loneliness is a huge problem. It's devastating. It is life ruining. And it's way too common among queer people, gay people, trans people, all types of queer people. We're all too isolated. We feel it constantly. I know you guys do because every time I talk about it, we'll talk about it to a great extent, okay? It is, it leaves us vulnerable to things like what I talked about before. That I've been vulnerable to and I've suffered from. It leaves us vulnerable to all kinds of things. We, do you know how, do you know how powerful it is that we, that, that to, to, to like be able to, to, if we can activate, we can surge energy and build connections across a global diaspora, we become so resilient. If we have connections, if we know one another and we have stronger connections, we can escape danger. We can help each other to get out of dangerous places. We can swing and, and affect politics in, ver in various areas. We can actually make changes for the, in the world that help us, that empower us. And also, not only that, but it diminishes the danger of uh, it, even interconnectedness. A healthy connection in our community makes our community safer too. Because it means people can talk to one another. It means people can dialogue. It means people are less likely to um, be victim of manipulation. It means people are less likely to find themselves alone uh, and taken advantage of, even within our community. It is so powerful. I want to see us build communities. And we build communities by building connections, by accepting connections, by reaching out into the world and grabbing one another's hands. And by building on those. I want to see more of it. I really do. And I want to encourage you all to help me build more of it. That's awesome, Brianna Huffman. Brianna Huffman says, so true. Thanks to activism from the local trans community in my in my city council in my hometown, my hometown city council flipped from five to five to two favoring Republicans to five to two favoring Democrats. That sounds like a huge win. The simple reality is that a lot of people at the moment, the internet is Internet is one way in which people can, especially marginalized people, can actually find each other. You can't help it if you happen to be trans and you live in a rural area. You can't help it if you happen to be trans and you, you live in a country where there's, uh, or a state where there's not a whole lot of trans supportive stuff. The internet is important. It means we have to take care of it. And we have to recognize it for what it is and use it effectively. And right now, I think there has been damage done. I want to encourage people to be thinking about this. I've been thinking about it and thinking about it in the right way. We need to learn how to use the tool, the, 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 use the internet as a tool to build community, to build real community. And I do think that 
many other things will flow downstream from this. Without community, we can't, you can't organize, okay? The community is central to the ability to organize yourself. The community is essential to building up lines of communication for important information. Community is important for associations generally. And I think some people put the cart before the horse and that we hear a lot of people online, especially in politics spaces, talk about, oh, get active, get involved, get, get, you know, get organized. But you can't organize if there's no community. Organization doesn't just sp spontaneously appear. You don't just say the word organize and then organization happens. Organization is downstream from connection. It's downstream from community. It's downstream from humans connecting to one another in a real way. That's awesome, EB the Purple. I do agree, Luxander. Luxander says we should at least try to like, we have to try to like each other. Try to do favors for one another. Give each other some grace. Communicate directly. Yeah. And this is not saying that you don't you have to like every single individual person, but we should uh we should be careful. Because I think that there is a lot of uh manipulation that happens quietly and poisonously online, especially now. Uh X Twitter, whatever you want to call it, is a fucked platform, okay? And a lot of trans people gravitated to Twitter because at its heyday, there were so many trans people connecting with each other on there. But it's changed. It's changed beneath you. It looks the same in most every way. It feels like it functions the same, but it doesn't. And the same is true about every other platform too, because they've all changed too. We have to be able to respond to the change. As someone who basically hasn't left home for like nine months, this hits weird. Well, I can't give personal advice because I don't know your whole life. Uh, not leaving home for a long period of time is, is very difficult. And, uh, but I assure you it's easier if you know that you're, if you know that there are people out there who support you, if you know that you're not going to be alone going out into the world. And also, you can start to get a picture of just how many other people out, are out there who are like you, who share struggles like you. And that's a starting point. We need time and we need to reassess. Again, I started this whole segment here, this whole long segment, talking about how long I've been online, how many different communities I've been in, how many different websites I've used to connect with other trans people. I even touched on some of the trends that were popular in those sub, you know, in those subgroups on the internet. It changes all the time. But the fundamental need is the same. We need to connect with each other as people. And beautiful, wonderful, breathtaking things will result if we can do we're all collectively and individually reeling from an incredibly difficult time. We have to reassess, reanalyze, change our approach and our habits. We have to change perspective when things change, and they have. Pandemic and the changing, the fundamental mechanical changes of social media require us to reanalyze our approach, to think about things differently, use different tools, and to use the tools that do exist differently something I'm working on, and it's something I'm encouraging all of you to work on as well. Nanachi, I met up with some really questionable people who I connected with online, and after meeting them IRL, they hurt me. I'm having a long grieving period on that. That can happen. That is a risk of all human connection. Truly, it is. It is a risk of all human connection. Sometimes, painful things happen. Sometimes you encounter people who hurt you. But we're stronger if we don't only have one connection. 
if our only connection in the entire world is the person who hurts us, that can be in a remarkably isolating event. If there's another person that we're connected to and somebody hurts us, that's one other person who we can be with. If we're connected to three people, four people. I'm not saying that large number is always better, but a diversity of connections is necessary. Humans are social creatures. Even the least social of us are still fundamentally social creatures. And I'm sorry that you got hurt. But also remember, it's not the end. Getting hurt once is, is just a part of life. You can heal and grow and reconnect and you will find people, I promise you, will find people who won't hurt you. I have been hurt many times. There's so much of my life that I've never told and never will tell on this stream. There are things that I've referenced, there are things that I've mentioned, but that I don't have any desire to tell to the entire world. Very personal things. Some of the things that I've experienced, some of the extreme hurts I have been very open about on this stream and there that I've experienced that I will never talk about. But the reality is, there is also great beauty. Right now in my life, I find myself in a place, the healthiest place I've ever been. Been through a lot to get here. But also I've learned a lot that helped me build what I have now. Other people. I am, I am empowered by my connection to people who care about me. They are empowered by my connection to them. Keep working on that, Buck Moon. You, you won't regret working on it. I know it's hard, but keep fighting. Seriously. It's, there is a beauty, okay? And I have not done a perfect job explaining it, but there is a beauty that comes. That I, There's this feeling that I get, okay? When I... And you don't see it as often anymore, but there was this period of time where I would log on to the internet, okay? And I would see a bunch of trans people joking around with each other, laughing, having a good time, supporting each other, talking about shit. And that was the majority of what I would see on the internet. You'd log on, you'd see some trans people posting the funniest meme that you've ever seen. You'd see their friends laughing and reacting in the comments. Th you knew they know each other. You'd pop into a group chat and they'd all be talking to each other. You knew that they, that two of them lived with each other. The other two fucking hung out, lived in the same city, two feet, two, you know, two blocks away or whatever. That is such a beautiful thing to see. And I know that we can start to rebuild that. I know that we can. We're all, a lot of us are, I can't say we're all still here after the pandemic because obviously not everyone is, but a lot of us are. And we can't just, it's one thing to recognize what happened and it's another thing to begin to build again. And that's what I want us to do. That's what I want to encourage you all to do. Because loneliness is fucking devastating. We're all stronger together. I hope this all made sense. I hope that uh, I was able to talk about it coherently and helpfully. There's a lot of stuff that is difficult to, to, to like, I can't tell you all the ways in which your life, the unique needs of your life. What I can encourage you is the broad strokes. I can encourage you to think about things differently. That's what I hope to do. Yuri says, Demon, Mama, Demon Mama's community is where I go to regain some peace. That makes me feel really good, and I only want to keep building that up. I want my community to be a, like a, to be a, a, a place where people can go and find other people like them and build those connections, start to build those connections. And I want people in my community to take those connections beyond my community. I want them to walk out the door together and go have an adventure. And maybe they come back and hang out. I would love that. I would love to see you guys back all the time. I'd love to hear the hear about your adventures. But I want to see people from my community connect with one another and be able to go out into the world and see things together and be stronger together. I want to see people form friendships and groups and, and those friendships and groups stretch beyond. I want to see those connections rebuild together.
Good, Nanachi. Keep keep holding strong, okay? That's really good to hear, Jason Kelly. A lot of people who are doing their best. And I and I think that also the more of us come together, the more of we'll be able to come up with better ideas. We're going to be able to share ideas and workshop ideas together, try things, fi figure out what works in this new uh the new world that we live in. I believe in us. Really do. Arlo asks, would you consider yourself a rad queer? I don't know what that term means. I have, uh, I avoid a lot of labels. There are a few labels that I'm totally comfortable with. I'm very comfortable calling myself trans. I'm very comfortable calling myself a trans woman. I'm very comfortable calling myself non-binary, but a lot of political labels, I don't really know what they mean fully. I don't always, uh, you know, I don't know. So I don't know. Maybe. I don't know enough about what a rad queer is. But would you like would you want me to define it? Sure, go ahead. Hit me with the hit me with the definition. Anyway, that's all for the main segment. If you're watching live, we're going to keep talking about this for a little bit, but thank you all who watched this as a video. Make sure that you're subscribed down below. I talk about this topic and many, many more very frequently. And I would love to have you as one of my imps. So smack that subscribe button and tell me your thoughts down below. I want to hear your thoughts about community. I really do. My fans will tell you I'm very good about uh, engaging in the comments. So tell me your experiences with community online. Tell me your ideas. And thank you for watching. It means the world.